you like to make a gluten-free Swedish cake called San Kocka? It's made with potato flour. It's like a butter cake or a pound cake, sponge cake. It's lovely and light, gluten-free and quite cheap to make because the potato flour is quite cheap to buy. So if you'd like to see how to make this cake, come with me and let's see. The first step to make our sand corka or sand cake today is we need potato flour. Potato flour comes in this 500 gram packet and I did some conversions before I started filming. A box like this is about 117 euros or 12.95 sec and it's a lot cheaper. It's about half the price of a box of gluten-free flour. Now potato flour looks a little bit like corn flour. It's naturally gluten-free. It's a fine texture. So in there I've got one cup or 170 grams. And in there I'm just gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of vanilla sugar. This is traditionally used instead of vanilla extract here in Sweden and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Just gonna whisk those together. That just incorporates everything. In the large bowl, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of sugar, 150 grams, just white sugar. And I need to add some butter. So I've got 185 grams of butter, that's salted butter. I've just started using that because the unsalted butter here is really expensive. But if you're using unsalted butter, you can add a little bit of salt. I'm just gonna use my little handheld electric beaters today, just so you can see what's happening. I'm gonna beat these until they're nice and creamy. The butter was also softened at room temperature for about half an hour before I started. Now that's quite light and creamy. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. Just before I do that, I prepared my small loaf tin before we started filming. I've greased it with butter and lined it with paper. And it's kind of long on the side so I can lift it out. And my oven is preheated to 170 degrees C with a fan. I'm just gonna do a close up of this. Next I'm gonna crack three eggs and I'm just gonna add them one at a time. And I'll scrape the sides as we go. You just need to beat those for about 20 seconds. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest, probably not the whole of this lemon, probably half. Many of the traditional recipes add a tablespoon or two of brandy. We don't have brandy in the house. So I'm just adding the lemon zest for an extra flavor burst. But feel free to add a little bit of brandy if that's what you'd like. I think that'll be enough. And now we're gonna add our flour, but just a third at a time. Just mix it gently. A bit of scraping. Like most pound cake recipes, we don't want to over mix it at this stage. We're just mixing to combine the flour. And the last amount of flour. Just gonna scrape my sides down give it one last quick mix before I pop it into my tin. That's all mixed. It's looking nice and smooth. Now we'll pour it into our tin. Now you might be thinking, oh no, my batter looks really thick. That's how it actually is. Now I'm just going to smooth the top over just to give it a chance to be nice and flat while we bake it. It's always good to tap it in case you've got any big air bubbles in there. I'm going to bake this for 45 to 50 minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on it and I'll check it with a little skewer to make sure it's done on the inside. I can't wait to show you. The time is going off so it's time to get the cake out. So I'm quite impressed with how well it's risen today and it's got a lovely crack like a pound cake. Let's just do the toothpick test. If it comes out clean, yes, it's done inside. Now, the hint to making this cake, or um, before you slice it, you need to actually let it cool in the tin. And this cake tastes better the following day. Uh, it tastes better once it's cooled. So we're gonna let this completely cool. I've just used my plastic 
knife here to go around the sides to ensure it's not sticking. I'll give it a slight little lift. Yep, it's going to come out. So let's let it completely cool for about an hour. Then I'll come back and slice it and do a taste test. So I'm back with my cake. It hasn't been quite an hour, but I thought I'd chomp into it. Now look, it has sunk down a little bit, but that's the nature of the potato flour. I'm just cutting into it. Look at that. So I want to just come closer and show you the texture. It's lovely and soft and light. And the reason Swedish call it sand kokka is because it's a fine sand-like texture. I'll also pop some photos up above so you can have a look. I'm going to bite into it. It's still a little bit warm. And as I said, it's even better when it's cooled down totally. Mm. It just melts in your mouth. Lovely and light. A little tip. I've tried making this a few times and the times I didn't take the time to whip up my sugar and butter, it went a lot flatter and not as light. So that step is probably the most important step. The next step is just adding your eggs one at a time and just beating them to combine them. The other tip is do not over mix it. When you over mix it, it makes this kind of cake tough. So it's light and fluffy because I didn't over mix it today. Phew, I got it right for the video. There are times when I video things and if they don't turn out, I don't upload them. Shh, don't tell anyone. I hope you've enjoyed this Swedish style loaf cake today. I really like it. It's a perfect one to whip up if you've got a gluten-free family member or friend coming. The first time I made it, I made it for a Swedish friend who's gluten intolerant. He loved it. I thought, wow, that's amazing. Give it a go. Let me know in the comments below how you get on. Hit the thumbs up if you've liked my video. I'll pop a few other links for some gluten-free cake ideas up above. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey door from Sweden. That's goodbye in Swedish. I might share some more Swedish words with you. <laughs> okay. Hey door, this is.